and welcome back. Now let's work on a problem. Let's work on an actual problem where we learn about direct map caches with some actual numbers and some actual problems. So here we go. I got eight bytes of data in a direct map cache with two byte blocks. Okay, ooh, eight bytes of data, overall area of the problem. We might have seen this before <laughs> there. Eight bytes of my total guy, two byte blocks. Okay, two bytes across, I got that. Okay, now we're gonna ask you some questions. How big is the tag? Index and offset fields if we're doing a 32-bit architecture. Okay, so that's usually the setup. So let's figure out the offset first. Let's do the offset first. Well, the offset is the number of total bits I need to, if I'm looking at how am I dividing up that set of bits? How am I, here's 32-bit address. Some's gotta be, some of those 32 bits has gotta be the T and the I and the O. So let's do the O first. Well, the O tells me which column I'm in. That's the first thing we do. So how many columns do I have? How many bytes, it's always in bytes, how many bytes do I have in a block? I, I, I figured it out. Uh, it said it, it says two byte blocks. Well, so two to the what? Two to the number of bits is that total number of bytes in that block. Well, two to the blank is two. So blank is one. So I need one bit for my, and that's what we saw before, one bit to determine my offset. What's my index? Well, it's the same idea. I just did this before, kind of when I was talking about the, the larger cache problem. Here we go. Total cache is, what's the area? Well, I told you eight, two to the three. What's a block? A block is two to the one bytes. Two to the three over two to the one is three minus two is one. Therefore, two to the two blocks per cache. Therefore, I need two bits to specify that number of blocks. So then I go to my tag. Tag is everybody else. That basically said three bits are needed to access a cache. I could, by the way, I could have told you the tag size already because you told me the cache size, that's three, because, sorry, you told me the cache size is eight bytes. That's three bits to access eight bytes. So therefore three can be borrowed for whatever. If, if I'm, even if I'm confused, some of them are index, some of them are offset. I don't know which is which. I do know that three of them are to tell me about the, the place it inside the cache. Well, the three are for there, the rest of them, 29, are my tag. And that's it, so I need a 29-bit tag and three bits to tell me which row, the left two bits of that, the left two bits are the index, that tells me what row, and one bit is my offset, which is what column. That's it. Again, why not the first full 32 bits for the tag? Well, why waste those those rightmost three bits are never used. They're always, you know, they're always going to be uh, 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 redundant. So we don't want to have them in that system. So let's do this. Now, a big picture. This is a really big picture idea. Taking a computer without a cache and then adding a cache doesn't change the process. It changes the process, doesn't change the value. Doesn't change the program. I told you, you should take the same code with or without cache. It does the same thing. Now, it may not be... It may be faster if you knew that there were cache there, but the same thing should happen effectively. So, I want to load a word. I got some memory. T1 is a pointer into memory. I want to load that and store it into T0. Got to clobber whatever T0 was and put that memory in there. And let's say T1 contains uh, 1022. Okay, 1022 is the is the uh, pointer. So, and what's in that address? 99. So what happens? Let's do the steps. Without a cache. Just the days without a cache. Back in the days, the simple, the simple Halcyon days before caches. Processor issues an address 1022 to memory. It says, I want to get, you know, what is that? What is LWT0 0 T1, where T1 is 1022? It says, look, can you please go to memory at, at address to 1022 and get something there? Yeah, sure, I can get you that. How much are you asking for? Oh, it's the LW, it's a word. All right, please, I'll carry it back word. No problem. Okay, here is 99. The memory reads it, returns 99. Memory sends it back to the processor, and the processor then loads that into the register. And by the way, at this point, you know how the whole thing works. You know that <clears throat> how the data, you, 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 I could ask you for a data path of what, what lights up and how it actually does it, and you could even show me the control lines to make it work. At this stage in the course, you can explain everything about how a load word works. It's really very powerful to understand how that whole thing works to run on a RISC-V machine. This lights up, this, this goes there, the index, the offset, there's a zero, at, there's a zero uh, uh, immediate there. That zero gets added to the memory location, doesn't change, it's still 1022, so that's an immediate, had to be extended. All those things you know how to do, and you know how to route it, you know what turns on, you know what muxes turn on, what the signal lines that go to the mux, it's really very cool at this point, your understanding of the whole system. Very powerful. I hope you walk a little bit taller now that you understand how that works. 
But again, this is without a cache. What happens with the cache? What's the algorithm with the cache? Again, I got my same load word, and T1 contains the same thing. Well, with the cache, it's similar to like what a hash function does. It says, well, you know, I could save time if it's in my cache than going to memory, okay? So what first I do is I have to see if it has a copy. Do you have a copy of that data? At, at, is that 99 somehow copied in, because I'm, remember, I'm only reading for now. I'm never writing, I'm only reading for now, okay? So is that 99 somehow in my cache? So if it is, I say it's a hit. We got it, woo! And I return that 99. I never had to go to Sacramento. Sacramento was really far away. Is it in my room? Is that 99 somewhere in my room? Well, I gotta check it if it is. If not, oh man, well then I gotta go to memory. And then here's what I have to do, here's a step four. I have to, memory reads 99 to the address, memory sends it back to the cache. So the cache is in there, when it wasn't there, the cache has to still store it for the next time. So it doesn't, well, I don't have it, sorry, I'm going to sleep. Don't go to sleep, you gotta store it for the next time. That's the whole purpose of the cache, is that you can have the first time, you'll have it for the next time I ask for it. It replaces the spot, that word, with 99, and then it sends 99 back to it. So it still has to do with storage and update itself, and then it sends it back. And from the process point of view, it didn't, didn't know. It didn't have to, it just ask for it, and if it was there, it was much faster return value. If it's not, magic things happen behind the scenes as it moves to the right place and updates, 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 and then finally I just get my 99 and I work with it, and it sets it to, to, to T0. So in some sense, it's the same thing from the processor's point of view, abstractly, I didn't know what happened below the hood, and now the cache is moving around and putting it here, blah, 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 and doing its thing so that it does the right thing. This is the last slide on this uh, on this particular uh, mini lecture, but I wanted to be, I wanted to show talk more about how to think about. It. I, I I created this because I realized as I was working with many students in office hours, they weren't visualizing it right. And I'm a visual guy. I got my PhD in graphics, so pictures always help me learn. And I and maybe some others are like that. So I wanted to show you how to solve cash problems in general. <clears throat> we always, as I mentioned before, draw our memory the same width as the cache. Okay, always the same. However, however many, whatever that block size is of my cache, draw your memory the same size, the width of it at least. And now, as I have my TINO, and I have a value, all zeros, where is all zeros in cache? Well, I always start in the upper right. There it is. Where is it in memory? Same spot. Like, these are, these are like mirrors. It's almost like a mirror. There's this, there's this wonderful, there's this wonderful Marx Brothers where they're kind of like the two brothers are pretending to be. He, he, he walks in and he thinks he's looking at a mirror, but it's actually his brother. And his brother goes like this. It's like I'll, maybe if I can sh grab a copy, I'll show you this over here. But it does the hand and the hand and the. It's a mirror. That's what's happening. As I'm asking for the memory, the cache is exactly the same spot. So wherever you see this arrow pointing to memory, it's literally the same spot in that cache. Okay. Next one, of, next, of interest. Uh oh, I just increment that guy, my, I increment my bi binary odometer by one, which means all I'm actually doing is change my offset. If I move my offset by one, what am I doing? I just move over by one. It's the next one over. So it's like I'm starting from the top right and read across to the left. I'm just increasing the bytes that I'm gonna ask for. As I'm asking for my address to change by one, I'm getting the next byte, then the next byte, then the next byte. And for now, we're just doing load bytes, we're just moving by one, okay? The next interesting thing, the next kind of significant number is when it gets to all ones. I want you to draw, think before I give you the answer, where is that all, where is that thing? If I say all zeros, zero, zeros, all zeros in my tag, all zeros in my index, but all ones in my offset, where is that in the picture of memory? Circle it. Circle the box. Actually, I'm gonna make an exam question. Circle the box where it is in memory in there. I'll tell you where it is. It means I got to the last spot before I wrapped into the next index. So it is in the top left, okay? Got that? So as I read across, offset continues to move across until I get to all ones, then it's the top left. Then what happens? Then it wraps to make the index up by one, and where is that? <clears throat> it's the next row. It's still in that, it's still in cache zero. This is tag zero, or cache number zero. And so again, that's here, that's the next row down. That's my, okay, so start to think about it and see, kind of visualize where this thing is. Now, the next thing is, what, what's, what happens when that maxes out? When that maxes out and offset maxes out, where am I? You probably can guess where I'm gonna be. You're exactly right. It is in the bottom left of the memory, 
the bottom left of your cache, and your bottom left of memory. Same exact idea. I hope this is helpful, by the way. When that wraps, what happens next? Well, as you might imagine, I now go back to the top left of my cache, sorry, top right of my cache, but now the tag has changed. Now I'm in the next cache. The cache went bloop, and because this is the next box, this is the next box. This tells me what my cache number, so my tag is now a one there. So one in all zeros is in the top right of the next cache size down in memory, or if I have my cache, I just go back to the top right. Because I basically go across, go across, go zigzag, and then I just jump back up there. That's what happens. So I jump back up there when I had all zeros. Because again, in this, I only am looking at these to tell me where I am in here. And I'm using this one to tell me which one of these guys I go to. That's all this is. It really isn't that bad. The next thing that's most important is all ones. Whoa, that's the biggest memory location of all time. Where is it? You're exactly right. It's the bottom left of here. And because this maps to that, it'd be the bottom left of that cache with tag number, whatever the maximum value is. That's it. That's the big idea of how to solve cache problems. Take your TINO, Theo Dan. Gracias a Theo Dan. Thanks, Theo Dan, for teaching me this. The idea is you are gonna be able to look, I could just tell my, I give you some bits and they look complicated. No, make your columns. There's my T, there's my I, there's my O. If you want it, if you were really fancy, have three different colors, red, green, and blue like I use here. And then start to make use of this, I don't know, this kind of visual way to think about this as you start to have problems. And as I start to have some piece of, here's a piece of code I might give you. What's happening in this loop? Oh, maybe it's just, look at this. Maybe the loop is just, let me, let me, maybe, let me go back. Maybe this loop is just in here in the cache. Maybe just reading this. Oh, okay. So I can think about that. That means it's right here. Maybe it keeps going. It just goes on here, right? It's on the right, okay. I don't know what my stride is. Maybe read this memory address and then jump another. If it's memory address, not the neighbor, if, I, if I'm reading by ones, I'm reading, I'm reading across, I'm reading across. What if I jump by some stride? I read this memory and then I jump to the next one. And I, how big is your stride? Well, what if your stride is exactly a block size? Well, that means I start someplace and I'm going down here because I'm jumping by a block. I jump by a whole block, which means I go to the next block. What if, I'm, my, what if my stride is the cache size? Whatever memory address I have, I jump by a cache. What, what, what happens if it's not even on the edge? Here's my first access here and I stride by my cache size. What's your next al al location? There it is, because I moved by a cache size. And by the way, if this is the first one, if that's the first one, where's the second one? Same spot, because if I jump by the cache size, it doesn't move in the cache, right? It does, this is just a copy of what that looks like. Not to say the whole thing is a copy of that whole thing, but I'm just saying the location in the cache is parallel to where it is in that box moved over. So. I could stride, I can make a memory access and then stride by some amount. And if I stride by a byte, I move across the top. If I stride by a block size, I move down wherever I start with, if wherever I start with, I'm moving down that same row. If I stride by a cache size, I st wherever I start with, and I'm jumping to the next guy, the same spot. Okay, so these are common strides we might have an example. What if I stride by a little less than a block? Oh, let's play with that. Here we go. A little less than a block. I'm here. A little less than a block means I'm actually going to go this way. A little less than a block. <gasps> what if it's a little more than a block? Well, then I'm going to go this way. Okay? What if I'm a, what if not exactly a cache, but a little more than a cache? What happens? Here, and I move over a little bit, and I move over a little bit. What if I'm a little less than a cache size? I'm here in the same spot, but a little's in here. <gasps> what if I'm not just a little less than a cache size? What if I'm a whole block size less, less than a cache size? It's starting to hurt. Here's my memory. Exactly one block size less than a cache size. If I start with this M, that means the next one is be up one and up one. It means I'm going up one. I'm kind of not completely getting there. What if I, my stride is, and by the way, play this slower and rewind this to make sure you understand this. What if my stride is cache size plus a block? Well, I start on this M, and the next time it would be the same M but down one, and the next M but down two. Okay, so think about as we give you some code and maybe have a stride as I'm accessing not just continuous region of memory, but like a stride and then another one and another one, 
how you're moving through this space to understand as you're solving these problems, what, how many hits do you get? How many times do you get it? How many times did you miss it? All those things uh, of, about in terms of performance of a problem, okay? Phew, I hope this is useful. I kind of, I really visually always go here. You give me any problem, I, I say, excuse me, give me time, hold on. I draw my picture. Okay, now let, now, now let me read the problem. And I label it, I draw my I draw my this, and then I say, okay, what's the width of the cache? What's the block size? That's the width of both cache and memory because I've drawn them the same. And now I start, here's my, here's my T, I drive my T's out, my T-I-O, and I drive them out, and I understand that, and then bleep, 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 that's what I do. So basically, just sit down, take your time on these problems, and draw the pictures, and you will get them right, okay? See you at the next lecture.